Good evening, fellow Plexers. This is now my fourth operating system install and my third video on the little inexpensive N100-based B-Link EQ13 mini computer. And I think I figured some things out and I kind of stopped what I was doing with this new test before I even tested fully to actually finish those tests on screen with you guys. But let me go through my history. So the unit came with a no-name um, SATA NVMe drive in here. I'm looking at it right now. It's an AZW 512G M.2 2280 SATA 240906C, if I can see that correctly. And I don't know who makes this. I haven't been able to look it up. There's some more numbering on it, but I think I'll need a magnifying glass. That initial install, once I finished the, the, the Windows um, onboarding procedure, was actually kind of horrible. With um, an ONN device that I have in my basement, a Google TV streamer to test with, I could not get any stream to Hardware Accelerate Transcode if it was 4K, with or without the tone mapping enabled and that was the whole point of this purchase to test tone mapping under windows which is now supposedly enabled on tiger lake or newer intel processors or the igpus and this unit is an alder lake family which is one generation newer than tiger lake so i thought it would be a perfect inexpensive test for a few series of videos and possibly to keep as a new bench system I'm kind of on the fence about keeping it right now or maybe sending it back after I do some videos. So that first install, I've described the HTPC client app as piggish. It just was not responsive. So I decided to stop right there and I had a, a um, PCI NV, NVMe drive from Crucial, a P3 Plus. It's a PCIe 4 um, drive. 500 gigabytes, I pop that in, put a fresh Ubuntu install with the snap package of the Plex server so the um, permissions were easy and I copied my test media from my network over to that local SSD. And that server worked fine connecting to it from other devices but still the HTPC client app was as piggish under that install as the original Windows install on the cheap B-Link SATA and VME. Try to keep all this straight. I've got some of the drives in front of me right now. But it worked. I, I did my first video on that and I got four stable um, 720p transcodes from a very high bit rate um, HDR 4K stream. I think it was 192 megabits per second. A fifth one caused some buffering on one or two devices. It wasn't a lot, but it's not acceptable, so you'd want to know the limit of four. Now that's not bad for an inexpensive device, but both my newer Synology NAS with a ninth gen Celeron processor and the, what is it, the UHD 600 IG, or 600 graphics IGPU can do five perfectly stable ones before a six stream starts some buffering. It actually starts a lot of buffering. But that's the same performance with the same test 4K m movie as my older bench system that has a i5-9500 processor in it. That's five perfectly stable streams with the same movie and then a six one starts to break things down. So this little MIDI computer with a more modern processor, closer to a Celeron than a full Intel processor, does almost as well as a 9th gen i5 or a 9th gen Celeron that's popular in a lot of the Synology Plus models from 2020 or one 2023 model and one 2024 model. So on one hand, that's a little disappointing, but it's not too disappointing. So my second video was my third OS install. I took a Samsung 970 EVO Plus um, PCIe NVMe drive and did my own fresh Windows 11 um, Plex install. Well, actually, I didn't do that fresh. 
that was a fresh install from my older um, bench system, the HP ProDesk. I just popped it in here, booted it up, let Windows do some updates because it hadn't been booted, and there was already that same test server or the same test server media on there and a, and a Plex server installed. That's what I used for my last video that showed the same four stable streams and the fifth stream, the, the additional fifth stream caused a little bit of instability. Not a lot, but a little bit of buffering. So now what I've done, what have I done? I have a 250 gigabyte team group SATA NVMe drive that I popped in here. I forgot I had it, and I did a fresh version of Windows earlier today. I've been coming down and up from my basement, on and off all day, doing Windows updates, letting it reboot. It's it's like watching paint dry to get Windows set up compared to Linux, but that's just going to infuriate the people that don't want to try Linux. So I'm all set. And to boot... I've got OBS installed because the thinking with some correspondence on Facebook with some of you guys was that OBS was just too much to do on the system while I'm using the HTPC client app um, trying to stream off this server. You know, it just seems like it was too much. Well, that's the test. I don't know if it'll work. You can see OBS running down here. I'll see how the recording is when we're all done. But that's the test because the HTPC client app was unusable under my own Ubuntu install and under the last Windows install that I just slapped in here. So let's just try the regular movie library. Okay, so we start up, that's fine. And let's put it into this transcode. And it takes a second. Okay, so there we are. We've got the hardware transcode with easy to stream media. So that's all I need, just one from the regular movie library. Let's go to my test 4K library. This one is tougher because I can't mute the sound like I can on my own desktop PC to make a recording. I just can't kill the sound for this under Windows. Well, <clears throat> if I was using Ubuntu or, <clears throat> excuse me, Pop! OS, I could figure out how to kill the sound just from the HTPC client app, but I have no idea how to kill the sound just for that under Windows. So I'm gonna take my chances and hope I don't get a copyright strike. Okay, so it starts up, let me pause it. You see the bit rate, 192 megabits per second. And I'm playing, and OBS is recording. So let's get this into transcoded state quickly. We don't have to leave it there because this is really proving another point. Let's take it down to 4 megabits, 720p. Remember, OBS is still running. Now it starts up, my last video, I already showed how the, the tone mapping isn't as good as under Linux, but at least it's working. And we've got a hardware transcode. It's like I've hit the holy grail. This third video is the video I wish I was able to do right from the start, but I didn't have all the information. So, I'll leave this pause for a second. Let's go into the transcoder settings just to double check. Tone mappings enabled. There's these new, new three tone mapping settings for only Windows. As I showed in my last video, it's completely different for a Linux server. The Linux server, you have five or six different algorithm choices, and the Hable is the one that's recommended with a Plex server support document. 
I'll have to remember to try to see if there's an updated document that talks about these three window settings. But this is great. This proves that Tiger Lake or newer, like this Alder Lake generation, tone mapping does work under Windows. And whether this B-Link is the best thing to buy for you, or maybe not the best thing to buy for you, this is what I wanted to prove. And I think I've also proved something else. The um, SATA SSD that comes with this device is garbage, in my opinion. Now, I would think that the um, Crucial SSD, and I've got a couple of these, they've never caused me a problem. You would think that'd be a, f a, a fine SSD to use, but I'm not quite sure how many lanes this has. Supposedly it's PCIe 3 and PCIe 4 um, drives are backwards compatible with every system. But I can't believe that a PCIe 3 connection wouldn't be enough for Plex server, especially when a SATA connection in another computer is on older hardware. Well, this team group um, SATA NVMe drive certainly isn't top of the line, but it's no slouch either. So I think what this test proves is that you don't want a PCIe 3 or PCIe 4 NVMe drive, you want a decent SATA NVMe drive in here to replace the crappy one from the factory. And I've got the HTPC client acting smoothly with a high bitrate 4K media play, either direct or transcoded. I can pull up the, um, the web app and show the transcodes, and I can record while I'm doing it. So, this changes the picture. This would give me a better recommendation. I definitely slap um, a good brand name like Crucial 32 gigabyte um, RAM stick in here. It's only got one RAM stick. It's not dual channel. I get rid of the crappy NVMe drive and put a good SATA NVMe drive instead. And I think you'll have a good little server if you're a Windows user. Now, what I'll do later, and whether I make a video on it or not, I will wipe this SATA, this Team Group SATA NVMe drive, and put Ubuntu back on it and see if I can do everything that I can under Windows. And I bet I can. I may or may not do a video. If I do, it's a quick one. So anyway, I'm, I'm more impressed with this now that I know that there's a drive option that seems to work well in here. Um, and I may even, I may even go up and just quickly record on my desktop computer, um, to see if I can do more than four streams. If I've got an issue with the drives, maybe that's why a fifth stream caused buffering on the other four. Maybe I can get past five streams. So I guess there will be another video on this setup. And I don't know, I don't know if I can join this video with the video from my Ubuntu desktop easily with MKV Toolnik. So this might be a part one to that part two video. So I'm gonna leave it at that, but I'm pretty excited, and this is this is better news than where I was. Uh, my last video kind of made this an okay buy, and this makes it a better buy. Now, I'd rather see somebody have 500 bucks in their pocket, 550, to be, maybe buy a bare mini computer and put some good memory in it and some good PCIe 4 um, drives in it, you know, like two little ones, maybe run Unraid on it, have a cash pool, have some redundancy, and then point back to a NAS. That's what I do. But anyway, long story short, before this gets too long, and I never know how to shut up sometimes, this is something that I'm glad I figured out. The SATA, a good SATA NVMe drive is so much better than the factory drive. And and let's let's discuss one last thing. This is on sale for 189 marked off from 249. It's not worth it at 249. It's just not worth it to then have to replace the the um, factory NVMe drive. But at 189 I think it is, especially if you're using USB media. 
because you don't need a large NVMe drive. You could use a 250 uh, megabit drive. You could use a 500 megabit drive because it's just for the OS, especially if you're pointing to USB media or making a mount on a NAS that doesn't have a good processor for transcoding. So that's it. I can't wait to see the video to see if I can post it and I can use my keyboard shortcut to stop it. Thanks for watching. Hello again fellow Plexers. So I just finished the third video on the B-Link um, mini computer with the N100 processor and I came upstairs to try to get um, five successful um, 4K transcoded streams going on it. I was hopeful the the SSD change would allow that, but it's not happening. Four play completely fine, just like the two previous videos, but you see we've got some buffering happening on this one. It just happened. It happened on that one earlier, and I've got some of the different sets turned down low enough where I can still hear them stop this one buffering um, so I'm in my office let me drop out well let me change my Nvidia Shield the, stu the tube style back to original quality because my last test four transcoded streams and one at original quality still caused a little buffering so I'm really surprised. I don't know if it's the processor and I don't know if it's the infrastructure of this inexpensive mini computer that's um, causing this, but I had expected this device to be able to handle at least five or more of these exact transcodes with the same media because my, as mentioned before, my i-95 processor and my bench system and my 9th gen Celeron and my Synology NAS could both do five easily before another additional stream caused disaster. I just expected the N100 processor to handle more, but it's almost unrealistic to think that a, a under $200 device is going to be that good for hardware transcoding. And this isn't bad either. So I do see some buffering still with a, with a fifth direct stream added in. So let me stop that. I let this run for a little bit with four before I started recording and I didn't see any buffering with just the four and that matches my two previous tests. So that's about it. This is going to be an addendum or a little part two video depending whether I can combine them to the video I just made and I'll get everything up on YouTube so you can see it. So the, the recap is this device works much better with a decent SATA NVMe drive in it versus the factory one. In my experience so far with a decent uh, PCIe 3, well I'm sorry, PCIe 4 drive in the PCIe 3 interface was less satisfactory than this. As a remote Plex server, you know, to, to, not as a remote, but to use as a Plex server and nothing else, <clears throat> it worked fine with that drive. But actually using it as a media PC to run the HP, HTPC client app on the same device the Plex server was running. That was really piggish, but when I switched to the better SATA NVMe, it was like any other modern computer I've set up. The NVMe, or I'm sorry, the HTPC client app just worked and it seemed to work as well as it does under any modern computer. <clears throat> All right, I'll keep talking if I don't stop, so I'm stopping and happy Plexing.